Premier Brad Wall joins me from our studio in Regina. So, Premier, let me get this out of the way. Are a lot of people knocking on your door and asking you to run for the Conservative leadership? Well, there's been a little bit of that, and it's humbling. It, it really is. Uh, it's a flattering thing to be asked to consider, uh, but I, uh, my answer is the same. The answer is no. So, absolutely no, under no, no thank you. Uh, absolutely under no circumstances would you seek the leadership of the Conservative Party. No, under no circumstances. All right. Now, what would you suggest the Conservative Party do in terms of addressing the leadership? Should they wait at least a year or so uh, before they hold a leadership convention? I think there's real advantage to waiting. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I don't think there's any particular need to rush. Uh, Mr. Trudeau has won a solid majority. Uh, obviously, we're looking at it at least at least four years uh, of uh, of the of the Trudeau government, and so I don't think there's any particular rush for the Conservatives to choose a leader. Uh, the process itself might be helpful, in fact, and might uh, create some debate within the party. That's a welcome thing for the for the organization to move forward. Now, have you had a, a chance to have a personal phone call with uh, uh, Mr. Trudeau? I have. Uh, the day after the election, I was grateful that he made time. It would have been a very busy day for the prime minister designated. So we chatted briefly. We didn't get into policy discussions at all, Bob. We, uh, you know, I, I shared with him that we were roughly this. I was a, about the same age that he is now when I was first elected in, in this current capacity and have had a young family then as he has now. And so... I, we just uh, shared our family priorities, talked about the, uh, the importance of family and, uh, and uh, basically, uh, said, basically agreed that we'll, we'll talk about other substantive issues down the road. But it was, a, it was a good first discussion to have and I'm grateful he made the time. Now, will you be accompanying uh, Mr. Trudeau and other premiers to the Paris climate change talks? I am going to be going to, uh, to Paris for that particular trip. In fact, uh, our Crown Corporation uh, power utility, Sask Power, was going to be there, I think, uh, the week ahead of that. There is, a, uh, uh, there is the chance to, uh, uh, to promote uh, an exhibition, if you will, of, of technologies that can reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And we are, of course, leading in carbon capture technology with respect to a large a commercial scale coal plant in southeast Saskatchewan and so we'll want to present that technology and I'll obviously I want to be there as uh, representing the interests of the province of Saskatchewan the Prime Minister has indicated the Prime Minister designate has indicated he wants to engage with premiers uh, while he's there and so I think it would be a missed opportunity to not be there. There's a real opportunity at these climate change talks to have a global agreement I know we have to work out the details for how you deal with that in Canada but are you are you yourself hopeful that uh, Canada can be a significant player at these talks. I mean, in the past, under Mr. Harper, we won the Fossil of the Year Award five times in a row, which wasn't particularly good for our image. Well, as you know, we've been saying consistently in Saskatchewan that we have to move in step with the United States, and many would point out that um, since those pronouncements were made, even by the previous federal government in Canada, the Americans have moved more aggressively. So I'd still think that's a first principle. Uh, uh, you know, a, a global agreement is, is important, but we need to make sure we're competitive in North America. Our ability to afford to invest, frankly, in new technologies that we know will deliver results with respect to climate change is dependent very much on a healthy economy. I mean, our ability to deliver on quality of life, on programs that we prize in this country depends on that economy. And so... There still needs to be a balance. We need to move towards a, a emission reduction, obviously. Uh, our province, Saskatchewan, needs to do better than we're doing. I freely admit that. But we need to make sure that uh, we haven't kneecapped the economy in terms of any agreements we sign. And that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm going to be there as well. Now, do you think he should set new emission targets ahead of the December meeting or wait until uh, there's a global agreement, then come back and meet the premiers and try to sit down for some kind of, a, of emission standards federally and then allow the provinces to set their own? Well, I think it is important to go to Paris first uh, and then come back and have a discussion as a country. I have said publicly and said so during the federal writ that I appreciated the fact that Mr. Trudeau's position was that targets need to be set and then the provinces need to be given the flexibility and the, lat and the latitude they need to, uh, to achieve those targets. Uh, and so 
uh, you know, that's still our position. We're, uh, we're grateful for that flexibility. I do think it's important to have that discussion at Paris and uh, see the determination uh, in terms of some sort of global effort that might come from it and then come back and, uh, and make some decisions on behalf of Canadians that balances the, the, uh, the things that we've been talking about, Bob. Premier, do you think there may now be a chance if there is, uh, because Mr. Trudeau seems to be very determined to make some progress on climate change, if that is done, that it increases our chances of getting a pipeline built, uh, maybe it's not going to be a keystone, but a pipeline built, so that you can, you and Alberta, Saskatchewan and Alberta can get their oil to market. Perhaps. It ought not to, frankly. There, there shouldn't be a linkage here, in my view, it, especially when it comes to the pipeline, well, the Energy East pipeline, which is by and large a conversion, as you know. And from an environmental standpoint, pipelines are favorable to rail. And the, the less oil we pipeline, the more it, it will be on rail. Uh, and so there's a greenhouse gas element to that, and there's also uh, a more severe spill element to it. There's a danger. We saw it like Lac Megantic. Uh, and so I, I don't disagree with the premise of your question at all, Bob. It may well be the case. I'm not sure that uh, uh, it should be that way, but, but it is. And I've been saying for some time, perhaps we ought to have given uh, President Obama a bit more elbow room around the environmental issue with respect to Keystone. Perhaps we should have been touting things like our per capita investment in CO2 sequestration, which I think is, I think it's the largest per capita public investment in, in, in CO2 mitigation in North America. Other provinces have been doing what they've been doing. Companies have. We have coal regulations more aggressive than the United States. Perhaps we should have been touting and promoting this more to give, uh, to give our trading partners a bit more environmental elbow room to, to make it easier to get pipelines approved. Because, uh, you know, I, last week I had a chance to meet with the Premier Gallant, who was in Saskatchewan, and we were talking about Energy East. It's, a, it's, an, it's important to the national economy. It's a, certainly important to Western Canadians as well. And, um, you know, if, if this helps uh, get approval, if this helps with respect to central Canadian interests, then, uh, then, then fair enough. We should, head, we should certainly head down that road. And finally, if you had one ask of uh, Mr. Trudeau, what would that be? Uh, it would be to, move, to be a leader on Energy East, uh, I think, and to, uh, to help. Uh, I mean, it's got to go through the process. There's an environmental and regulatory process. There's the First Nations element that must be respected, but a federal government can be a champion. So that would be 1.1 and 1.0. 1.1 on the list, if you'll permit me, Bob, is TPP. Let's move quickly on that. It's potentially, potentially transformational for our province and for Canada in terms of those 12 uh, economies with whom we'll be able to reduce trade barriers and those would be, uh, if you would allow me two items on the list, I'd pick those. Well, thank you very much, Premier. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be here, Bob. Thank you.